I, 32 female, live with my partner, 44 male, and work in research. My primary colleague, 30 male, and I have worked together for about two years on a major project involving significant intellectual and labor contributions from us both. The project is expected to span at least another two years and is vital to our careers. Not long ago, my colleague confessed to me that he is and has been infatuated or in love with me for pretty much the duration. It took place via a long email that was written after an evening of drinking. This was totally unexpected. In retrospect, there may have been some signs, but nothing that wouldn't just as easily be accounted for by a considerate personality. Shortly after this confession, I came to my husband with the issue. I wanted to get his advice about the situation and showed him the drafts which I composed to organize my thoughts on the matter. They stated unequivocally that I'm not interested in a romantic relationship and hope these feelings won't complicate our work together. I was again surprised at my husband's reaction. He seemed offended to think I must have invited my colleague's affections and that I should immediately quit my job as in put in notice tomorrow. I was so taken aback, my immediate reaction was to laugh or snort at this suggestion, which was probably a mistake. That would be utterly disastrous for my career and isn't an option I'm willing to consider. I greatly prefer the entire scenario had never happened, as a lengthy and challenging project hangs in the balance. Still, I have no real concern at this point about my colleague forcing the issue or letting it compromise our work, it seemed like it intoxicated getting my feelings off my chest. I'll need to put a lot of thought and caution into proceeding with the work dynamic, but abandoning our project isn't even on the table. About a week has passed. My husband has been alternating between angry and silent treatment and suggested several times that I move out of the house to be with my new spouse. Today I swung by the house on my lunch break and found the locks changed in my luggage on the patio. I've been blocked on his work number in Sal. Obviously, he could not possibly intend for me to really move out and is just pulling what I absolutely believe to be an idiot move, power sulk. But seeing how seriously he's taking this has my doubts up. Maybe I was ultimately too uncompromising when I refused to even entertain quitting my job for the sake of conversation and his feelings and to shut the idea down so abruptly. Am I the idiot? Obviously, he could not possibly intend for me to really move out. I know it's hard to face. Still, I suspect he actually does if he's gone to the lengths of changing the locks and packing up all your stuff. If this is how he acts over you refusing to ruin your life over something so minor though, you're probably better off without him. If you talk to him again, do not leave your job for him, no matter what he says. Almost every toxic relationship starts with a man convincing the woman to leave her job. My toxic ex tried it, and thank God I didn't because it was my lifeline. Find a place to stay that he can't possibly know about and get a lawyer. Change any passwords he would know, especially anything tied to money or credit. Keep a charged cell phone on you at all times. Make sure a trustworthy person knows where you are. Husband may go insane when he realizes you're actually leaving and not begging for him back. You are not the idiot, obviously. House is actually in my name inherited from my dad before I married. The luggage you packed contained only some random things, a couple of suits, miscellaneous items from my nightstand. This makes me believe he's just chucking an outsized tantrum instead of expecting me to actually vacate. But you've brought up some good points. My God, you need to stop minimizing everything. What else has he done to you? Screaming at you? Gaslighting and making things your fault even when you felt he was to blame? The fact that you see him throwing out your stuff and changing the locks as a tantrum suggests you disregard a lot of horrible behavior. Well then, if it's your house, call a locksmith and let yourself back in. Pack his stuff and kick him out. Why on earth should you find alternative accommodation when you own the damn house? If he is so butthurt about some thirsty male colleague having the hots for his wife who doesn't reciprocate said hots, he will blow up his marriage over this. Girl, let him. You deserve better. Good Lord, it's a one-sided crush, not an illicit affair. Is his ego that fragile that he makes astronomical leaps in non-logic? Something tells me that this behavior isn't new. People don't go to the extreme overnight. Either this has been long coming in previous behaviors and reactions, and you ignore the signs, 
or your husband is projecting because he is unfaithful and is latching on to this crust situation to shift blame to you. Either way, OP, this is alarming and you really need to evaluate this relationship. I, 27 male, have been with my fiance, 24 female, for three and a half years. We are very happy together and I can't imagine my life without her, but we have had a hard time reconciling this disagreement. We've been talking more and more about marriage recently and what it would look like. For me, part of the significance of marriage is becoming a family with each other, including sharing our last name. When I think of being bonded with her in that way, I get really happy and excited, like we are an actual pair and the whole world could recognize it. However, she wants to keep her last name and says it's a hassle to change it. I think that's fine, but I'm the only guy on my side of the family who could carry my family name. I have two sisters who are married already, so it's literally just me left. It's a pretty unique name, not like Johnson or Smith. So my family name would die out if I don't carry it and pass it on to our kids. Fiance doesn't really care about matching names and suggested I could change my name to hers, so we match, or otherwise just both keep our own last names after we marry. She has a brother, so her family name would be carried on either way. I feel like it's different for that reason, and she should compromise with me and change her name. Am I the idiot for not wanting to change my family name and asking her to change hers instead? I am willing to hyphenate our names, but she's not. She does not want to change her last name at all due to its hassle. So basically, she says I can take her name or just accept us having different last names. Sorry, dude, you are the idiot. Welcome to the 21st century. It is a massive, massive pain to change your name and update everything. Massive. Words cannot express how massive. You either want to marry her or you don't. You choose. The name change BS is a holdover from when women were considered property. While some still embrace that tradition, it's not universal and not everyone does it or wants to. In fact, in some places, it's illegal to do so. If you want to make this your hill to die on, so be it. I love when dudes fixate on continuing their family names like there's some 15th century monarch trying to found a dynasty. Sorry, but your insecurity isn't a good enough reason to nag your partner. Also, OP states it would be a compromise for her to change her name. How? She doesn't want to change her name and doesn't mind if they have different names. He's the one who wants the matching names and specifically his name. So his compromise is for her to do what he wants. You are the idiot, OP. Why don't you both keep your own names? I've been married to my husband for 16 years and never changed my last name. I still get weird looks or comments from time to time, but I really don't give a crap. So why should I change my last name that I love? Isn't it enough that our kids have his last name? You are the idiot. If you were a woman, would you push your husband to change his last name if you were the last offspring to carry the family name? And how do you know her brother will have kids? And even if they did, maybe they'd be given his wife's maiden name because who knows? Really, this is not something to force on someone. Serious question. What happens if you have two or three daughters? Are you going to force their husbands to take your last name? My fiancé is absolutely terrible with money when he gets depressed. He splurges whenever he hits a rough patch. He has never put us in the hole, but he still buys stupid stuff and rarely gets used or used once and tossed to the side. He also has a habit of buying drinks and snacks every time he goes to the store even if he had just eaten. We have easily over $200 in gas station purchases a month. If he's not spending money, he's not happy, basically. We both work full-time at really good paying jobs. However, we have been saving for nearly a year and a half for a 20% down payment on a home loan. Despite us both putting money towards the savings in every paycheck, we don't have much, maybe $2,500. Why? Because he's on a depressive spell and has been for like four months. Therefore, he's only been putting maybe $10 out of his paycheck into the savings to my $100 to $150. I don't use the internet. I don't watch TV. I don't play games. I don't use it for literally anything. Despite this, usually, I'm the one who pays the bill. We split bills. It runs $90 a month for basic. Three days ago, I came home to find a brand new toolbox and a bunch of tools. 
This man is not handy. I have never seen him even touch a hammer. This toolbox and tools ran about $350. I was angry. Didn't pay for the internet. Now it's turned off. When he asked why the internet was shut off, I made it quite clear that if he wasn't buying stupid stuff that he would never use, the internet would be on because we would have the money. I wasn't about to leave myself with $40 for the next week just to pay the bill because he decided to splurge. He tried arguing that those things are stuff we should have in case of emergencies. I won't budge, and he doesn't have the money to pay the bill either. So now he can't play his video games to decompress. Am I the idiot? Edit. He refuses therapy. He gets depressed easily once a year for months at a time. Not the idiot. Obviously, you have a much bigger problem than an unpaid internet bill. You don't say when your wedding is, but I promise you these problems will get worse after marriage. You say you split the bills, yet it seems you're picking up a huge amount of financial slack. He has serious emotional problems that he refuses to get help for. You are taking care of this man financially and emotionally. Please don't marry him before these issues are resolved. I'm curious, how did he save up the money to buy you a ring to propose with? He wasn't depressed at that point in his life. And that was two years before we started saving for a home loan. It's a very simple ring. I think it only costs like $300. OMG, run! Run like the wind! He will not change. And you will be eating stale bread and hot dogs while he dines out on steak and lobster by himself. And he clearly doesn't want to help himself. So for right now, I hope you have an individual bank account and do not give him any access. Do not purchase anything with him. Financial issues are one of the top reasons for divorce. Huge red flag. I've been with my 20 male, lady 21, for a little over a year. She had this guy friend who's that guy that's obviously waiting for me to mess up so he can pipe. It's evident to me and anyone who's met him, except for my girlfriend and her girlfriends, her truly platonic guy friends agree with me, LOL. I constantly tell my girlfriend that he wants to be intimate with her, and she doesn't believe me. She tells me I'm insecure about her having a close guy friend. I insist that I don't care that he has a crush on her. She should be aware of it, though. For her sake, I'd rather her not learn that her friend just wants to sleep with her. A few days ago, my girlfriend had a thing at her place with her friends and wanted me to come. I got a little tipsy and started making some jokes. I eventually made the joke that I could leave whenever I needed to. The second I left, I knew the guy would be around to keep my girlfriend company. There was a lot of laughing and stuff from pretty much everyone, except my girlfriend and that guy. The guy turned bright red and stormed out. My girlfriend told me I shouldn't have made a joke about that because I probably embarrassed him. Other people went after him and the night went on. The following day, my girlfriend says that that guy can't be her friend anymore because of how he feels about her. She blamed me because I called him out and made him admit his crush. She told me I was a massive idiot for embarrassing him in a public way and ruining the friendship by forcing him to admit he liked her. I don't really think I did much wrong. I made a joke. That's it. Am I the idiot? Massive idiot. LOL. You're obviously insecure, as she pointed out. Y'all been dating a damn year? Then you embarrassed him in front of everybody? Won't be surprised when you get dumped and that guy steps in. Am I the only one who actually hopes he gets dumped? You are the idiot. It doesn't sound like there was anything inappropriate going on between them. People are allowed to have crushes. You don't have confidence in your relationship, so you humiliated him to make yourself feel better. It wasn't a joke at all. LOL, the old, it was just a joke defense. Usually, if you find yourself falling back on that, it's because you are the idiot. This time is no different. Why did it matter to you that his crush was out? Maybe your girlfriend knew. Perhaps she didn't. She likely knew. But as long as it was unsaid, she and her friend could pretend it didn't exist and remain friends. But once it was said, it had to be acted on. A decision had to be made. And it cost her a friendship. This is a friendship that she clearly valued because she's angry that it's over, even though her eyes have been opened. You are the idiot. You embarrassed a guy who didn't deserve it. He was keeping his feelings to himself. You cost your girlfriend a friend. And for what? What was the greater good served? 
by making sure everyone knew the truth? You can rationalize your actions all day, but this is an ego stroke, pure and simple. Not the idiot. The fact that he even stormed out when you brought it up, then confessed to liking her afterward is not okay. Though I'd worry about your girlfriend. She's really quick to protect this guy for some reason. It sounds like she's keeping a backup. You made a joke. If it wasn't a big deal, he wouldn't have stormed off. He would have laughed. She's just angry you were proven right. My husband and I are throwing a small housewarming party to celebrate buying our family home. However, there is a small problem that I want to know if I'm the idiot here. My husband's parents are divorced and remarried with stepfamilies. My husband is the youngest of three boys. All three of them had a hard time with the divorce and fondly remembered their childhood before the divorce. My in-laws don't, of course. What happened is my husband and I had some childhood photos up in our home. The two he put up are from before the divorce, back when he was happiest and when he felt like his family was his family and he wasn't part of a broken family. Almost 20 years later and the three of them still feel like they have a broken family instead of a bigger family. There are some from after the divorce, but you don't really see them as easily as the big ones on the wall. It bothers both of them, but my mother-in-law has been especially pushy about getting a big photo from her happiest time when she married her current husband. She has tried to get us to take one before. She mentioned having a very special gift for our housewarming and how she was hoping I would take care of it. I asked her if it was a family portrait. She was confused why it would matter. I told her my husband had been clear and she wasn't going to get it in around me. And in fact, if she gives one, it will be returned to her. She told me it's incredibly rude to reject a gift and even ruder to reject one before it has been given. Likewise, I feel it's rude to use a gift as a way to get your own way in someone else's house. Am I the idiot though? Not the idiot. Seems like you have clearly communicated to mother-in-law that the new family portrait would make your husband uncomfortable and sad. If that truly is the gift, it seems to be more for the mother-in-law's happiness than your family. So is OP supposed to receive offensive gifts and be happy to receive it? By that logic, OP should gift mother-in-law with a portrait of yourself, flexing your biceps for every celebration and milestone. Anniversaries, birthdays, divorce, another wedding, you name it. Let's see how happy she gets after receiving the same gift five times before she refuses. Exactly. This isn't a gift for OP and her husband. This is a gift for mother-in-law for mother-in-law and is an obligation to OP and her husband. You don't give someone an obligation. Mother-in-law is selfish if that was the gift. And if that wasn't the gift, her reaction would have made that clear. Everyone's the idiot here. You and your husband are entitled to have whatever pictures you want in your home. But his attitude sucks. Happy couples don't just wake up one day and say, hey, let's get divorced. The fact that your brother and his brother see it this way tells me your in-laws put a lot of work into putting on a good front for the kids until they just couldn't take it anymore. It's one thing for a little kid to want his mommy and daddy back together, but your husband is old enough to know how adult relationships work and should be glad his parents are happy now. I can't imagine how hurtful your husband's immature attitude is to your mother-in-law that she isn't allowed to be really happy. You suck for starting a fight over something that hasn't even happened when you could have just put the picture, if that's even what she gives you, in a closet. Your mother-in-law sucks a little for wanting to push something onto you because it sounds like you probably are getting this picture. Still, I'm giving her a little bit of a pass since she's had to put up with her son's poor attitude for 20 years.